this is a very true story. Uh. My first case to handle this spiritual stuff uh, when I was in my early 20s. The first reaction when the victim uh, stand in front of my door, my main door, she's a lady, uh, she's a lady, I think in her mid-20s, she worked in a bank. The parents suspected that uh, uh, because the change of behaviour from her daily life, uh, you know, they observed something is wrong. Uh, for example, she started to wake up in the middle of the night, start talking to herself, and she started to cut down on her food. You know, she, she grew very thin within two months. Just right at the main door, she starts screaming at it, holding on to my gate, shouting, why you people bring me here in Mandarin? Ah? Then uh, I was so scared, lah. I'm a rookie. Ma. The way she talked, she starts screaming. I was quite panicked also at that time. Is there anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. So, so I just uh, look at her, I stare at her and I shouted at her, Shut up, come in. Then she suddenly uh, very thin, you know. I was quite surprised. Uh, I thought, wow, sus up already, and that kind of thing. So when actually when I start doing the ritual to help her, uh, the process actually take up about half an hour. Along the way, when I start chanting, she vomited non-stop until my whole living room and balcony is terrible, uh, you know, with that kind of smell. Uh, then I was quite panicking uh, during that time. So there is also a portion that I almost forgot what I'm chanting. Rookie, ma, you know, panic. No? Everybody got their first time, ma, you know. So uh, along the way, I'm lucky. La. My back is facing the parents. La. So I just move on, you know. Then I beg for my teachers to help me, you know. Let me recall the chanting, you know, the proper chanting for, for, for this project. So and suddenly the, the inspiration just come. Then I, I carry on until she knocked out. So when she knocked out, uh, I have a procedure to, I have a ritual to wake her up. Immediately when she woke up, she, she looked around, she looked very, you know, blur, you know, and asking, why am I here? You know, the parents are quite happy, you know. So once this thing is done, and they ask me, uh, Master Joe, so what is the charges like? The ang pao, how much should I give you? I tell you, actually my face is in green form, but I act very calm. And then I said, never mind, la, up to your donation. So immediately when they left my place, uh, less than two minutes, my master actually called me up. And the first question that he threw in, so how? Is it exciting for you? No, I was like, hey, master, how come you know? He said, yeah, my sight was being activated in a way, activated. La, you know. I said, I was quite panicked. He said, don't worry. He said, the teachers will be with you. It was a test. La. It was a test. You see? Now I talk to you, my goosebump is coming out. So this is a very happening and very bad experience for me, for a rookie. So along the way, when uh, I practice throughout the years, uh, uh, it's a bit numb already. It's like a surgeon, uh, you see blood every day, uh, to them it's like nothing. It's like reading newspaper every day. So uh, that's why you hardly can see uh, any motion or any feeling uh, from my eyes. Uh. It's almost numb already. Wow, I must talk about this. Uh. This one, very, uh, very kanchong and very exciting to talk about. No? Uh, the worst scenario is uh, once there was a Chinaman, a man from China working in Singapore, okay, on construction site. So he was recommended by his own supervisor saying that uh, they actually come back from Vietnam from a project and they started a new project in Singapore. So he said, this guy don't drink. It's very rare to find, you know, our China citizen don't drink. So he, his stomach actually bloated. Bloated. Then uh, they sent for medical checkup. You know, these people, when they want to get their permit, they got to send for a medical checkup. Everything is okay. Everything is green light. But the fellow, when come to night hours, the fellow will start to complain, stomach ache, not feeling well, that kind of thing. So uh, they bring it, bring him to me. Okay, he looked very normal, just a slightly bloated stomach. So he said this thing bloated within one week, which is uh, weight gainers don't perform that good lah, you know. So 
So I asked him to uh, put on the joysticks, you know, to respect my features before I can do any so-called checking, see whether is there any negative energy, you know, uh, inside his body. So what happened is uh, when he hold the joystick, he cannot hold it properly. The thing scattered all over the place. Five joysticks only, so light. Even children can lift it up. He just hold and he starts shivering, and then he drop everything. I said, you must pick it up, put in the urn. That I can do for you. He forced himself to pick it up and he started crying. Immediately when he poked the joystick into the urn, okay, he started kneeling down and crying and vomiting before I even start anything. So I moved on. Then I, I checked, I realized that uh, it's a form of uh, black dark arts, lah, okay, using uh, the buffalo skin. This is quite dangerous lah, because uh, the, the, the stomach will start bloating and bloating and it will die just like that, you know? or sometimes to the extent it will burst. Okay. So after I help him to take out this thing, he immediately he actually shit in his pants. The whole house thing like shit. Lah. Really, really. Lots of craps all over my balcony. Lah. So what happened is uh, I use plastic bag. I go and pick up something very, very hard. About the size of my fingernail, the surface. And the thickness is like a metal ruler thickness. So I pick it up, I wash it, okay, I try to study what is that. This is a buffalo skin. I say this one is quite common in Vietnam. I say maybe you have uh, actually uh, you know, got it from Vietnam. I say, do you travel you know, for the past six months? He admitted, he said yes. I say, so do you mess around with any girls you know, and you give empty promises and that kind of thing? Then he very reluctant to reply me because he can speak Mandarin. So I speak Mandarin to him. I asked him, I said, you have to tell me the truth. And then he admitted, he said, yes, actually I have an affair with a woman and I promised to marry her. But due to the completion of the project, the construction in Vietnam, he, he come back to Singapore uh, without contacting the lady. So I think the lady comes from a spiritual family. I do not know. I do not know. You know, because uh, Vietnamese also cater a lot of spiritual service from Cambodia master. So all these are very dangerous art. So I, I also put myself in danger to help him because I'm also not very experienced during that time. So in order to help people, sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself. Lah. So I, I gamble my way in. Lah. Once you actually disarm the black magic, okay, then there, there may be a war, a spiritual war after the victim left home, leaving me and, you know, the, the other party, you know, at night just to, you know, you know, they will feel, they will feel one kind or they will say, oh, somebody actually dismantled my spell, you know, and that is when maybe they will send and try. So this is a very personal war between two spiritual masters, see, so... By doing this exorcism, exorcist, all this type of project is actually very risky and not very money making in Singapore. Okay, I do have a family, you know. Something goes wrong to me, uh, maybe I sleep tonight, I don't, I don't get to see the sun tomorrow. Throughout the years, most of the victims, I can tell you, Eugene, most of the victims, like I said, 100 victims. The person who really hit by a black magic is less than three, three person, less than three person, really. They are mainly people who don't believe in spiritual stuff, they don't wear proper protection, and then, you know, they just pull back, you know, they got friction with those spirit, wandering spirit, and then they are being possessed. But they, these are not being sent by another master. These are so called, you are in a very bad state of luck. Sway lah. Then you kena. Then another thing, another per, uh, uh, factor is uh, when, like I said, during the last few episodes, you consume abuse drugs, then they will hit, they will, they will hunt you, you know, they will, they will hit to hit with you just to get into your body. So if you're a person, you believe in doing good, good deeds, you know, accumulating merits, you know, uh, it's very likely that you will involve in uh, possessed by spirit, uh, very, very likely. You see, so of course, people like me also, I wear protection. I can't assume Singaporean. 
It doesn't mean that, oh, you are a master, you, you no need to wear what you are so good, no need to wear. Come on. Ah. There are many, many masters are ah, very good and very powerful. They still die of black magic or during combat. There is, there is. So if you were to wear a proper amulet blessed by uh, holy masters, uh, good stuff, you know, you're wearing any amulets, actually it helps. It helps in a way whereby during your bad luck, this thing is still considered a shield for you. Especially you like to go around film haunted house, you know, you like to, you know, gang up with your members to travel to the kind of, you know, spooky place. You should encourage your members to put on something to protect before you go in. But nothing is perfect. When you were to wear this, you know, negative energy will walk away from you. That's why it's very hard for people to have shield with them, the proper amulet with them. They can, you know, have a good hit on, on spiritual stuff. So I think... Uh, you, you, can, you can do it lah without wearing one. Lah, you know? When you got a problem, maybe you can come find me. Yeah. <laughs> Touch it, lah, lucky lah for me. So far, most of the, most of the encounter I had, lah, I can actually overcome. But there is one that almost uh, I lost myself. Lah, uh, because uh, they actually throw in a uh, black magic curse with a hidden with a hidden black magic meaning you take out this on the surface actually there's one more coming in meaning once you were to disarm the black magic from the victim once the thing is out they will start to bite their own tongue that is the critical part i'm very very inexperienced that time when i start to actually uh, during the process uh, i can feel that almost there already so she KO and I see her mouth start moving. Then I remember what my master told me once. He said, you be careful to, to certain people, certain victims. Uh, they, they, they are being cursed in this way. You got to have stamp, something stand by uh, to put inside her mouth to prevent her from biting out her own tongue. Uh. So luckily, I always have metal ruler with me. Uh. That's why just now I mentioned metal ruler. So, so I just put the thing, I just open the jaw, I squeeze the whole metal ruler inside, the, in between the jaws. Uh. So prevent her from, you know, biting her tongue. And then during that time, I was uh, quite kanjong. Uh, because uh, I know how to do this, but I don't know how to do that. At that very moment, you know, we have Sony Ericsson 338. But during that time, you know, I call, I call my master. I say, Tuaki Liao, I got this problem now. The victim is KO, but the jaw keep moving. I can't stop. So my master actually, on the very spot, teach me an additional chanting. He said, you use holy water. You know, you sip the holy water, you chant, you chant your holy water, and you open her mouth, you spit into her mouth. I was thinking, oh my God, she want me like shit, like want me to, you know, go so close to her lips, though. no choice. Lah. The parents is like looking so hopelessly there, then I, I do it, lah. I do it. <laughs> then she, her tongue start to, her mouth start to stop, lah, and she start to open her eyes. Then I very reluctant to pull out the metal ruler that time. I said, you okay no? you okay no? I said, yeah, yeah, what happened? Ah? I, I straight away, I take out. So, so this is something uh, very dangerous. Uh. Imagine she bite her own tongue, then I have police come to my house, you know, what happened, you know, that kind of thing. I get myself into trouble just to help people. But I'm very, very blessed by my teacher, my Guba Achan, that all this encounter I've been through for the sake of helping people and at the same time helping myself, I'm very protected. I'm very safe. I do not know one day maybe I ended up become one of the victims. But I pray hard not to. So what did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions.